Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Let's sing together. Okay, today we're going to have a little bit of fun. You are going to be the children in our Sunday school class. And I have asked two helpers to teach you how to do the motions to the song that I am going to sing. And when we looked at what Pastor Tony was going to preach today, and he's preaching from Proverbs and the wise and the foolish and that kind of thing. This is a song that came to our mind. So we're going to have a little fun with it. We want you to do the motions along with the kids. And let's see if we can have some fun. Okay, are we ready? Do the motions. The wise man built his house upon the rock. 
The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up, and the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up, and the house on the sand fell flat. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessings will come down. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. The blessings will come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord. I'm on the rock. For a lift in me from the miry clay, I'm on the rock to stay. Now we're going to have you sing it with us, and we're going to stop on the rock. How many of you have heard that song before, I'm on the rock? A lot of us have. So we're going to do it, and we're going to stop on the rock, okay? Are you on the rock today? Okay, I want to hear it then. I'm on the rock, hallelujah, I'm on the rock to stay, hallelujah for a lift in me from the miry clay, I'm on the rock to stay. Let's turn to one of my favorite songs, number six, and let's sing How Great Thou Art.
Good morning. Uh, I'm going to do a, a morning prayer, but before I do, I'm going to give you some information. Um, this is from Larry Whiting about um, Paz Cordona. Um, I don't know if you've heard of uh, the, the missions trips. The Paz uh, is one of the leaders that uh, is there. And she is uh, tomorrow supposed to deliver uh, food to a hundred families. That's the good thing. The bad thing is there's been back-to-back -back two hurricanes that have come through Honduras. So the prayer request is that you would pray that she'd be able to get down the roads and deliver the food to these families. It's a very important prayer for us to uplift uh, because the roads I don't think are very good on good weather there and with two hurricanes coming through is that right <laughs> Larry you've been there so so the the extreme need for that prayer is uh, is there and um, my wife Cheryl's not with us today and she had vertigo again last night and we I would like to ask that you guys would pray for her we figure out what's going on she's had that five or six times now in the last couple months. So um, I'm gonna also pray for her and the service. And uh, we, we had a, a praise too this morning. We had to set up more chairs for our Sunday school class. And if more people come, we're going over Proverbs. The more people come, we've got more chairs and we'd love to set them up. And uh, we're, we're going over Proverbs and that's the same thing that Tony is preaching. Uh, this morning and in the next few weeks. So we're going to give you all sorts of wisdom. So <laughs> we would like you to invite you to come out to that too. Well, let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I just uh, think of the situation in Honduras where Paz is wanting to deliver food to 100 families who are in great need of this food from the devastation of these two hurricanes. I just pray that your will would be done in this situation, that you would allow her to be able to get down these roads safely to these families that are needing the food. Just, it's tomorrow, Lord, I think, and just be with her, be with whoever's driving the vehicle and the whole situation, that they would be able to minister to these families. I just pray it would be with Cheryl, just this quick, Thinks she's suffering from vertigo, and we got to figure out what it is. Lord, you know what it is. Uh, give the doctors the wisdom so we can get this fixed in her life. And your Lord, as is, is, uh, Pastor Tony is preaching on Proverbs and, and in our Sunday school class, I just pray that the Holy Spirit would touch our lives here in this congregation right now as Pastor Tony is preaching to us. Send the Holy Spirit through him and just touch us with the wisdom that only you can give. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Dan, for leading us in that great song. God is worthy of all of our praise and all of our glory. That's why we gather here to make much of his name and worship him. Well, this last year, my wife decided to do something that many people have decided to do this year, and that is to paint the house. Uh, how many of you had an opportunity to paint your house this year? Anybody get a chance to do that? A couple people. I see hands going up. So uh, Sarah did a, a lot of research before painting the house. She went through the room. She got a, a, a catalog of different colors, and she'd go and evaluate and weigh colors. She went to the paint store and got samples and would paint parts of different colors. And she ended up painting our family room, our living room, our kitchen, and our hallway. Um, if you've ever painted your house or something house, you know it's not as simple as just taking out a roller and just going on the walls, right? If, if you decide to do that, you would probably make a mess. There is a lot of preparation that goes into painting a house, right? First, you have to do all the research of what color you actually want to get. Uh, you have to get some spackle and cover the holes in the walls. You need to sand <laughs> the mistakes that you made and in your life, in your house. And then the, the job that I just despise is taking the, the, the painter's tape and going in all of the areas to get them nice and covered. And then you got to cut in the corners. And then the fun part comes, you get the roller and you get to do the work of painting a house. So just like that, um, painting a house takes preparation. We know that in order to build a successful life, there are things that we must do to prepare. In order to have a better life, in order to have a successful life, there are things that we must do to get ourselves ready for that. Because a good life doesn't just happen by accident. We all know this. If you want to be successful in your finances, there are some things that you have to do in order to be financially successful to prepare for that. Um, if you are going to have successful relationships, there are things that have to be true about your character of yourself and the people in your relationship in order for that relationship to thrive. Uh, if you want to have a successful career, if you want to be a lawyer, you just can't one day decide I'm going to be a lawyer. There is a lot of education and preparation that goes into place to have a successful career. Did you guys know that coming in today? Is this new information? No, we, we all know that in order to be successful, we need to prepare. So what must we do in life? And that's the theme today. What must we do as followers of God to prepare to have a successful career? life, to have a better life than what we have. If you go online, if you do a Google search, I did this, I just typed in how to have a better life. Um, you'll get lots of articles. So I looked at a bunch of articles and I summarized some of the main points that you can find on Google. If you do a search, these will be up on the, the board here. Um, one of the things that you can do to prepare is to make good goals. Um, have something that you want to achieve, write that down, go for it. And another thing that you'll find um, for advice is Find ways to keep yourself motivated. I don't know, give yourself a pep talk when you wake up, look in the mirror, um, say, I feel good, I feel great, I feel wonderful, and stay motivated. Um, also, another way to, stay, uh, to have a, stay motivated or to have a better life is to have good, positive relationships in your life. And we know that that's true. Uh, keep a positive attitude and also work hard. These are all things that you'll find on Online And all this is good advice, right? We would all say these are things, if we want to prepare for success, if we want to prepare for life to be better, these are things that 
we should do. However, when I looked online, I, I found some things that were missing. Uh, and a key component in our life that we desperately need in order to have a better life. We'll find that advice and that wisdom in the book of Proverbs. If you would, please turn to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. If you were here last week, we talked about how God has given us tools to provide ourselves a better life. He, he's given us the, the right equipment in order to be successful. And we discovered last week that God has given us Proverbs that if we study them, if we read them, we will become wiser, more skilled in how to live life. God has given us his word to read, to know him better and be prepared. So the book of Proverbs chapters 10 through 31 are a list of wise sayings that if we heed, we'll be wise. But chapters 1 through 9 of Proverbs is an introduction. Uh, chapters 1 through 9 is Solomon's way, the, the person who wrote Proverbs, it's his way of saying, if you want to get wisdom, here's how you prepare. This is what you need to have in your life, the skills you need to have in order to prepare yourself for a better life. And so what I think is interesting is the beginning of chapter 1 of Proverbs 1 and the end, chapter 9, give the same advice. And I think this is key. I want to read these verses, Proverbs 1, 7, and also Proverbs 9, 10. And listen carefully. If we get this down, if you get this down in your life, this will help you prepare for a better life. So Proverbs 1, verse 7 says this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So at the end of the introduction, Solomon writes this in Proverbs 9, verse 10. He writes, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. So if you took that phrase, what would you say is the key to having a better life, the key to preparing for a better life? What is the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of knowledge in these verses? What does it say? The fear of the Lord. How do we prepare for a better life? How should we prepare? Let's talk about this first for the next few moments. We know this, that a better life will come by worshiping. Uh, you can prepare your life to be better by worshiping the Lord God. So these verses say that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What do we mean by fear? I think this next picture will help illustrate what we mean by fear. Um, there is a, a movie, uh, that, or a, a documentary that came out on Disney Plus called Free Solo. And it's the story of a, a young man named Alex Honnold who uh, does free soling, which is basically climbing a mountain with no protective gear, no harness. And so this documentary tells about him uh, climbing um, El Capitan, which is in Yosemite, over 800 meters tall, and it documents him climb, trying to climb this up with no harness. And I was riveted watching this documentary. But in my mind, I was thinking, this guy has no fear. Uh, this guy is... Maybe he's foolish. He's, he's, he's oblivious to the reality of gravity, <laughs> right? That just a wrong move and it's over. And the documentary tells about many of his friends who have died in this pursuit of free soloing, trying to climb mountains without no harness, without any protection. Um, I think there are many people in this world who live without the reality of God in their life. Uh, they don't have a proper fear, a proper respect of who he is and what he's like. They're living without a harness and life. You see, a better life comes by worshiping God, by acknowledging that God is real, that he is dangerous, that we must pay him his due, realize that he is there and that he exists. And if we don't do that, we are living foolishly. But the fear of the Lord is more than just acknowledging that God is there, that he is real. Um, worshiping, uh, fearing the Lord is really worshiping him. So in our life every day, it's making much of him. It's living our life with the reality that God is real and that I must acknowledge who he is and I must bow before him. I must submit myself and my life to who he is and what he is like. How do we prepare for a better life? 
It's by acknowledging that there is a God and that I must surrender myself and my life to him. You see, this is the foundation to having a better life. If you ignore this, life is not going to go the way that God has intended for you. Um, In order to live life the way that God has designed, we must worship him. Proverbs 1, 7 says that this is the beginning. This is the start of knowledge. So if you don't have this in your life, you're not going to get anything. The beginning of knowledge is fear. So what does that mean, the beginning? Well, another way of saying that um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, as an example, is uh, the beginning of learning the alphabet is your ABCs, right? If you're going to learn how to speak the language, you need to learn your alphabet. Or you could say this, the the beginning of learning mathematics is learning your one, two, threes. Um, The starting point for wisdom, the starting point for knowledge is this basic understanding that there is God and I must reverence him. Um, We all know this, that in our life we struggle when God isn't first. Have you experienced that in your life? Those moments when you've walked away from the Lord and tried to do things on your own, that things just don't seem to work in your life. I know this, that when I'm parenting my daughter, when my relationship with the Lord isn't right, when I'm not fearing him, when I'm going on my own basis, my own knowledge, I tend to mess things up. I tend to get frustrated where I shouldn't get frustrated. I tend to say things that I end up regretting. Um, we know this is true in our relationships for those of us who follow the Lord. If, if I'm right with God, it seems like my relationships with others just flow. Uh, that, that, that a love is there and a kindness is there because I'm recognizing God in my life. But when I ignore him and his presence in my life, my relationships struggle and fall apart. And this is true in my character. When I acknowledge the Lord, when I fear him, Um, I end up living like him and serving like him. And when I keep my eyes off of God, I tend to struggle and fall away. So how does fearing the Lord bring a better life? Let me give an illustration here with uh, my guitar. Um, I want to play a song for you to teach you how we should prepare uh, for our life. So I just wanted to wake you up. Doesn't sound so good, right? You see, uh, my guitar is completely out of tune. And in our life, we are all born out of tune (laughs) with God and with each other. And so what the fear of the Lord does is the fear of the Lord teaches us how to get in tune with who he is and how he has created this world. So I'm going to have Lori play on the piano, the bottom note. Anybody know what the bottom note on the guitar is? It's an E, so Lori, let me hear it in E. Teresa, you're nodding your head, is that right? One more time, one more time, Lori. All right. Sound right? Good, thanks. Let's give Lori a round of applause for that. Great job on the... See, what can happen in our lives is many times we, when, when we're born without a knowledge of God or without putting him in our lives, we, we try to play our own notes. We try to do our own thing. And when we do that, we are horribly out of tune. And our, the, the, the noise we make is chaotic. And you can see that in our world of people living life apart from God and the chaos that it brings. And so when we fear the Lord, what that means is we are tuning our life to who he is because we believe God is the creator of all things. He, he made all things. And so when we fear him, we are aligning ourselves up to him. We're listening to his voice and saying, I want to, to play the notes, God, that you are playing I want to hear what you are doing. God, I want to care about who you are and what you care about. Instead of living for myself and playing my own notes, I want to play what you want to play. So how do we fear the Lord? Well, God has given us many ways that we can connect with him and learn how to fear him. 
We know that he has given us his word. Psalm 19 tells us that the word of God teaches us the fear of the Lord. So through his word, we hear his voice. Also, God has given us something called prayer. That as we bow before him on our knees, we are able to recognize who he is and what he is like. Uh, this week, we had our prayer ministry. And after, after our prayer ministry on Wednesday, one person came up to me and said, you know, I really needed this. You know, I, I, was, I was just going through the day oblivious of who God is, and then I came to prayer ministry, and it seems like everything got connected the way that it should. Um, also, God has given us something wonderful called the Sabbath, uh, a day of rest. Uh, he has given us, for us, we celebrate Sabbath on a Sunday, most of us, where we gather here as his people to learn again how to fear him, learn again how to put God in the place where he belongs, where he deserves. So thank you for being here this morning. And for those of you uh, watching the video later, take time uh, to get in God's presence, to recognize who, him, who he is, because the beginning of knowledge starts with the fear of the Lord. So let's get that verse on the screen again. Proverbs 1 verse 7 says this, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The starting point for building a better life is fearing the Lord, but don't miss the second part of this verse. Uh, there, there's good instruction here for us as a starting point, as, as preparation for a better life. So the second part says this, a fool despises wisdom and instruction. We learn this, that in order to build a better life, it begins by listening. It begins by hearing what God has for us. You know, we live in a culture that celebrates arrogance. Uh, we, we talked about that in Sunday school this morning. We, we live in a culture that, that says you have to exalt yourself in order to be successful, in order to have a better life, make much of yourself. But Solomon says that you're not going to prepare for a better life if you're arrogant. And in fact, if you think you know all the answers, your life is going to not go well. I think a, a good picture of an arrogant life is a phrase used in the Old Testament uh, called being stiff-necked. Are you familiar with that phrase in the Old Testament? Someone who is, is stiff-necked is someone who knows all the answers, who has the right view in life and you can't persuade them. Remember, Moses went to Pharaoh to try to convince him to let the people go, but it says that Pharaoh was stiff-necked. He was going to be his way. He was the king. He was the Pharaoh. No one could change his mind. Um, when we are stiff-necked, when we do not listen, we are not preparing ourselves well for a better life. Uh, a couple years ago, Sarah came up to me and said, hey, Tony, I, I would like to go to a marriage conference with you. Um, there's this Family Life Today conference down in Kalamazoo, and, and let's go there for a weekend. I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be enriching. And, and my first response was being stiff-necked. I was like, I know how to have a good marriage. What's wrong with our marriage? I went to Bible school. I've read the Bible. I know how to have a good marriage. And she convinced, talked to me and talked to me and finally went, and guess what? She was right. It was a wonderful conference. And there were things that I heard that I never heard before. There was insights that I gleaned and it helped our marriage. And it was a good foundation for us. When we are stiff-necked, we're not in a place for wisdom. Um, an arrogant response, a stiff-necked response is to say these words over and over again. I know, I know, I know. Have you ever done that before? Someone gives you advice, I know, I know, I know. Um, in relationships, um, that can be a common response when talking with someone. You know, you're, uh, someone gives a different perspective. I know, I know what you're saying, I get it. Uh, or if someone gives you uh, financial advice, yeah, I know, I've heard that before, I know. Or in church, how can we help our church grow and improve? Well, I know I've been in church my whole life. I, I know what we're supposed to do. Or in politics, have we ever heard that before? People saying, I know, I know, I know the answers. Um, Solomon here says that that is foolishness. A fool 
is stiff-necked. A fool despises wisdom and instruction. James 1.19 says it this way, Know this, my beloved brothers, let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. So how do we prepare for a better life? We learn to be pliable. Uh, Because when we are pliable, we are able to look up and hear the instruction from the Lord. We're able to receive wise counsel from others. Um, I learned uh, the importance of listening uh, earlier this year, or maybe it was last year. um, I I have an opportunity to meet with uh, some pastors, with with a council of pastors. And last year we were preparing to, to put together a conference for some churches. And I was part of the conference committee, me and two other pastors. Uh, One pastor was a pastor at Shelby Road Baptist Church. It's a a very successful church in a rural community. In a a church of a town of about 1,000 people, they have 500 people coming to their church. And so this is a pastor who knows what he's doing. He's very successful. Uh, Also, the other pastor is a pastor named Mark. He's a pastor at Rochester Hills Baptist Church, which is a, a very large church. And he is also a very successful pastor. And here I am as, uh, as a youth pastor uh, with a youth group of 30 with these great men. And I remember we were talking about um, a conference and what we should do for the conference. And they turned to me and say, well, what do you think about this idea? And so I started to speak. And what I noticed with these two pastors, these two men that I respect and admire, is they all turned in their chair and they leaned in to hear me speak. At first, that took me by surprise, you know, that they would do this, but their attention was riveted completely on what I was about to say. And so to me, I learned that lesson of, okay, why are these guys so successful as pastors? Why are they successful as human beings? It's because they listen. They didn't come into our meeting knowing all the answers. Here I am, just an inexperienced youth pastor, and they're turning their attention What is there to learn? What is there to glean? See, this is the posture that we must all have in order to be wise, in order to have a well-prepared life. Uh, What if in our life we leaned in more? Uh, What if uh, when when we have a conflict with someone, instead of doing this, right, which is the response most of us take when there's a conflict, what if instead of putting our arms up and being stiff-necked, what if instead we leaned in? And we had our ears open to listen to what they had to say. Uh, what, what if in our life, if we need to make a decision, important decision about our life and what we should do, instead of leaning back and thinking we know the right answer, we leaned in and asked questions and, and we responded with that insight. What if, if we're struggling with a, an addiction that we've been struggling with for, for years and years and instead of being stiff-necked and saying, this is something that I'm never going to have victory in, what if we leaned in? And we look for help and for wisdom and for guidance. But what if we feel overwhelmed by the pressures of life and and everything that's going on in our world? What if instead of just staying back and saying it'll all work out, what if we leaned in and sought answers and advice? See, this is the great advice that Solomon gives to us in the opening chapter of of Proverbs chapter 1. A fool despises wisdom and instruction. A wise person will listen. So are you prepared for a better life? Have you set yourself up in a place where you can be uh, successful, where you can grow and learn? Uh, How many of you would would go to a dentist if they never prepared in school? If you showed up to the dentist and the first thing they said was, hey, this is my first time. Uh, You you would jump out of that seat, right? (laughs) You You would go away. Uh, the same thing true in our life. If we're going to be successful, we must prepare. That begins with worshiping God, fearing Him, and also be, means having a listening heart. For those of you who build, you, you've heard this before, you always measure twice and then you cut once, right? Measure twice, cut once. And in our life, so often we live our life going out, making decisions without first fearing the Lord and listening to His voice. Go ahead and put that verse on the screen one more time as as we kind of summarize things today. This verse says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom 
and instruction. Now, at first glance, these, ver- these two phrases might seem like they're not connected, but if you think about it, they're really str- closely related, aren't they? Uh, meaning this, the, the connection between worshiping the Lord and listening is clear, to, is clear. It's this, that a better life begins with humility. Uh, if we're going to have a better life, it begins with us being humble. It, it's a posture that we take in our life that says, I don't have the answers. I, I have needs. And, and we say, God, I need you and I need help. The, the path to wisdom begins with acknowledging our need. Uh, one of my favorite movies is a football movie called Rudy. It came out a, a while ago, and it's a story of a, a, a really small person who wants to play football for, for Notre Dame. And in the beginning of the movie, uh, the main character, Rudy, is looking for some advice on, looking for some wisdom on where, what he should do to get into Notre Dame to play for football. And so he goes to a priest, and the priest gives him this advice. Uh, the priest really says, Rudy, I don't know what to do, there, but there's two bits of information that, that I really know. There's two things in life that I'm certain of. One, there is a God, and two, I'm not him. <laughs> and to me, that summarizes Proverbs 1.7. <laughs> there is a God, and I'm not him. In order to get wisdom, in order to perform a better life, we have to come to that daily acknowledgement of who he is and our need for him. This verse, um, we all love this verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We can quote it. This is another uh, paraphrase of Proverbs 1, 7. This is the verse, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. I love what verse 5 says. We fear the Lord. We trust him with our whole heart. We don't lean on our own understandings. We're not going to be stiff-necked. We're we're not going to think that we know it all. We're going to trust him and depend upon him. This verse teaches us that a better life comes with an attitude of humility. You know, we remember this, that our salvation teaches us all about humility. When we look at the cross, it's a great reminder that we need to be humble The cross teaches us of Jesus Christ and what he did for us. Uh, God became man, the the greatest act of humiliation. And as he came, he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And as he lived this life, he served those who needed help. He, He helped the helpless. He reached out to those who were rejected in society. And he didn't elevate himself. He served and he elevated his father the Lord. And then Jesus did the greatest thing for us. He died on a cross. The most humiliating, humbling experience that a person could have. He was made naked, stripped bare. He was beaten and he was hung upon a cross. And his blood was shed on that cross for your sin and for my sin. And because Jesus died, he was able to offer us a great gift, a gift of salvation the gift of forgiveness from our sins and the hope of eternal life. Have you accepted that gift? Have you received the Lord Jesus as your Savior? You see, to do that, that takes humility. To to be saved, to accept Christ into your life takes humility because we have to realize that we have a need. We have to realize that we are sinners, that we are broken, that, that we play all of the wrong notes in life and we need someone to deliver us and to free us. So coming to the cross takes great humility. God, I need your salvation. I need your forgiveness. And the great truth of Scripture is this, that if you confess your sin, he will forgive you, and he'll give you a new life, and you'll be restored to God in a relationship with him. You see, we start our Christian journey with humility, recognizing our need. That's how we continue our walk with God. We continue our walk with God always with humility. There's never a point where we come and say, I got the answers now. I've got it laid down. We always recognize we have great need. We are people of humility. So how are you going to prepare for a better life? What are you going to do to take those next steps 
Proverbs 1, 7 again says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So for those of you who are graduating this year are seniors, we have a lot of seniors graduating from high school this year. For those who are in, in college, you have a lot of life choices that you need to make uh, that are going to shape your future in these next couple of years. How are you going to make those decisions? What, what's going to be your framework for what you're going to do with the rest of your life? Proverbs here tells us the, the right framework is to humble ourselves before the Lord, uh, to fear Him, to serve him and live with that framework as you make your decisions. Um, how many of you got a stimulus check in the mail in the last couple of weeks? Uh, how do you know how to spend that money? What, what, what's the framework for what you were going to do with that? When you took that, did you just have a complete mindset like, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do with that? Um, or do you take time to fear the Lord and to seek his counsel? Um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Some of you um, in your work situations are in uncomfortable places uh, where your ethics are being challenged and uh, you have to take a stand for things that are right. Uh, this passage, Proverbs 1 7, will help you. Uh, as you make those decisions, as you navigate those waters of, of working with people who are unethical. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of your knowledge. Let me ask us one more question. What if 2021 is worse than 2020? I just, yeah, everybody, whoa, everybody's like, hey, don't, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just, I'm not saying it's going to be. It's just a hypothetical. It's just to get our brains thinking this morning. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. But what if, we, we, we don't know the answers, but, but what if, what what if things don't get better in life this year? We, we, we don't know, but we do know what Proverbs 1, 7 says, that if we fear the Lord, if we have him first in our life, if we are worshiping him, he's going to help us be prepared. He's going to give us that knowledge and insight that we need as we walk with him day by day, each and every moment. So on your screen is a, a picture, on the screen is a picture of two houses. Oh, which one are you? Uh, Vi sang the song this morning of building our life on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the one, the person who doesn't fear the Lord is like the person over on my left, on the left here, right? A life that's going to fall apart. A life that's going to come to not a good end. But the person who builds their life on Christ has a solid foundation. So where are you today? Are you building your life on the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you fearing the Lord and walking with him? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for your word this morning, and I pray that the truth of Proverbs 1-7 will be ingrained in our minds and our hearts. Uh, Father, I pray that we would walk with wisdom. I pray that we would walk in worship recognizing who you are and your sovereignty, your goodness, knowing that you are far above us. Father, I pray that we would walk in a spirit of humility, a spirit that recognizes our need for you and our, a spirit that recognizes our need to learn and to grow. Father, I pray that you would help us to, to be people of wisdom. God, thank you for your word and for your spirit working in us. I pray that you would help us to live your word out this week in our lives. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to invite you to sing this song with us. It's a song speaking of who God is. And it's a, a song that helps us recognize the fear of the Lord. So let's stand as we sing the song. It's called, I Stand in Awe. And as we sing, reflect on the beauty and the glory of the Lord.
Let's walk in the fear of the Lord. You are dismissed.